What's up bros? Welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss. Today we're going to be talking about instance masters. Now if you've worked with instances before, you know it's a great way to keep your poly count down and you probably or hopefully have watched our instancing for low poly count tutorial. This is a little bit different. This is about management. This is something that is a very very good way to organize your instances and have instance masters because it's going to help you in the long run when you're working on a really large project so in this scene i have a snowman and i could make instances of this snowman and then i could have a bunch of snowmen in my scene but this guy right here actually i don't want to have him in my scene at all because he's the master and i like to have the master sitting at origin you can see it's at zero 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 and I don't like to do anything with the master. I don't want him in the scene. Now, if you were to create an instance of this guy, um, you can do that. I have a shortcut up here, but you can do that by hitting shift C and typing instance. If you were to create this instance of this guy right here, and then you were like, okay, well, my instance here is at origin. I want to turn him off. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to click your little uh, traffic light things and then all of your instance are, instances are going to turn off, and you don't want that. So I'm going to show you how to make an instance master. It's very simple, but it's a very, very key thing in organizing masters. The other thing is if you were going to make a lot of instances move around or do something in a group, it's kind of wonky to have like, you know, 15 to 20 instances and then the, like this one null over here because it just doesn't fit with the rest of them. So you create this instance and you kind of turn it off and you put it over to the side so that everything in your scene that you're using is an instance. And uh, so I'm gonna delete this instance here and I'm gonna show you, it's very simple. Um, on the Snowman Master, I'm gonna either, you can either create a new null or you could hit Alt G and it will automatically put what's selected into a null. Now I'm going to copy the name of this snowman master up here, the snowman master. Now when I create the instance, I'm still creating the instance of this guy here. And he still exists over here. Um, I'm going to turn on render instances to keep my low poly count down. But what I'm going to do now is instead of turning off the snowman master, the main one I had before, I'm going to turn off the null. Now I'm holding down option. I believe control will do this on the PC. So when you click these buttons, they both click at the same time. That's a nice little uh, shortcut there. Um, now you can see that my instance is still on because it is referencing the version of the snowman that is on as opposed to this one here, which I've turned off. So my instance is gone. It's out of the way. It's out of the scene. And I can create multiple versions of this. I'll create all my different snowmen and I can turn them and make them do whatever and now they're all in the right place the other nice thing is that when I click on this snowman I know that I am clicking on the instance if you had the snowman turned on let's say your master snowman turned on and you were just clicking around on these different instances here in the scene if I were to click over here I might end up clicking on a piece of the snowman instead of the main snowman. If I'm just clicking on things in the viewport and not looking over here at what I'm actually clicking on. See, now I have the nose selected by accident. That's another nice thing about having this guy turned off is that you won't accidentally do that and then hit the move button and then all of a sudden, you know, hit the wrong thing, click like this and then like move the nose off because then it's going to move it on all of them or whatever. Um, so I'm going to turn the uh, snowman master back off here. So all we have are these instances and I'm going to put, I'm going to null that. I'm going to call that snow men. So I've got the snowmen. I've got the snowman master. I'm going to null that and I'm going to call that snowman. And now it's all in one nice place. If I, uh, now, now what you don't want to do, I mean, you can, but what you really don't want to do is you don't want to move this entire null because then you're moving your master somewhere. Um, I like to keep this categorized and organized and keep the snowman, the snowmen in one, all the instances in one like that. It's nice and easy to manipulate. And then the master is separate and he's always going to be an origin. I always know where to find him. And that's just a reference of geometry only. So I'll bring this over here and you can see nice happy snowman. 
nice and fast. Still only 3,000 uh, polys going, or tries technically, I guess, in the viewport, nice and fast. And, and it works really well. Um, again, to reiterate the last tutorial, if you haven't seen that, you should go look at that and see how it affects poly count. If I turn off render instancing and I let that re-render in my viewport, all of a sudden I have 17,000 uh, and everything gets a little slower, a little slower to calculate, a little slower to uh, move around in the viewport. And you can imagine that that adds up over time and your scenes will get quite heavy. So keep that render instance button on. I'm Dave Koss. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe on our YouTube channel. You get all the tutorials the moment they come out. You can also listen to our podcast, which is crazy in-depth about geeky graphic stuff and the industry and whatnot. Um, we are also on Facebook. We are on um, uh, Instagram. We're on all everything. We're on Twitter. We're on uh, all social media. And, of course, BroGraph.com. Um, iTunes is where you can get the uh, podcast if you're interested in listening to that. But everything you need to know, anything that you might be looking for, is on BroGraph.com and links out to the appropriate place. Until next time, have a good one. Later, bros. BroGraph.com, an online resource for learning critical components of Cinema 4D and After Effects, specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another BroGraph motion graphics tutorial. We give you professional time-saving tips, shortcuts, and lessons that help give you an edge over your fellow designers. Not only this, but our new BroGraph talks help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join us for live sessions, check out our crazy Cinema 4D experiments, or just watch our Fun with BroGraph series, where we show you practical applications for techniques learned in previous tutorials. Do this from the beginning, and your client is going to respect that, and they're going to respect you, and they're going to respect your time. Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead, all with a slight dash of dry humor peppered in. Real nice banana. BroGraph.com, your source for tutorials that will help you thrive in the motion graphics industry. Don't just play around with Cinema 40 and After Effects, master it, and make money by becoming indispensable at your workplace. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. It's pretty good, I guess.